He was rejected and humiliated for being a weak orphan boy, but he was actually an immortal demon beast. Cabane is an ugly, disgusting, and pathetic boy who was abandoned by his parents. Since then, he's been taken care of by his aunt in a small village. However, unlike all other kids his age, Cabane doesn't go to school. Instead, he's forced to work in the fields alone, where every kid bullies him for smelling worse than a rotten egg. But suddenly, some strange incidents of animal death started to happen around the village, and Cabane's aunt decided to hire a man from Tokyo to investigate. Every kid in the village was excited to hear that someone was coming to the village. They thought this was their big shot to be recruited and move to the city. Among them, there was Yatero, Cabane's cousin. He was smart quick, and more importantly, he bullied Cabane. Meanwhile, the man from Tokyo, Kohachi is on the way to the village in Cabane's aunt's car because he got a flat tire. She explains why he was hired. The livestock was perfectly healthy, but the next day, they found it dead with no clear explanation. She asked him to keep the matter secret to avoid spreading rumors in the village. After arriving, Kohachi sees Cabane in the field and greets him. But Cabane just bows, causing Inugami to think that he is either shy or a hard worker who doesn't even go to school. However, Cabane's aunt didn't share any further details about this matter. While relaxing in the hot springs, Kohachi was interrupted by a child's voice offering to wash his back. Yataro comes and introduces himself, revealing that he will be taking care of him during his stay. Yataro happily talks about Tokyo and how he wants to live there, but Kohachi asks him about Cabane. Yataro explains he is Dorotabo, the nickname given to him because he worked with soil and manure all day. Yataro emphasized that Dorotabo shouldn't be around other people due to his appearance and bad smell. However, after the bath, Kohachi requests for Dorotabo to take care of him from now on. In the morning, Cabane takes a bath and then brings food to the detective. Kohachi then introduces himself and explains that he is there on an investigation. He asks Cabane if he has seen anything strange in the fields. Cabane wants to leave and talk after breakfast due to his odor as other people can't eat while he is around. But Inugami explains he doesn't mind it. Cabane guesses the investigation is about the rotting corpses and explains he is in charge of disposing of them. He explains that all the decomposed animal bodies had something in common. They were chewed up, in a way that seemed too brutal for a natural animal. He believed only a monster could do it. He mentions that there had already been six incidents, all after a new moon night. There is a new moon in five days and Inugami decides to stay and starts helping with Cabane's daily work. After a long day of working in the fields, the detective lay down and asked Dorotabo about a peculiar stone that Dorotabo always wore hanging around his neck. Dorotabo explained that he had possessed it since his parents abandoned him when he was just a baby. Inugami wants to inspect it and realizes it is a rare life stone, which is formed only under special circumstances. This led to the deduction that Dorotabo's parents didn't abandon him. They must have had a reason to leave him behind. Inugami asks Cabane if he wishes to meet his parents, and while not fully sure, Cabane guesses he may want to see them. On the night of the new moon, while waiting for Inugami, Yatero appeared and started shouting at Dorotabo. He was upset because he felt Dorotabo was interfering with his dream of going to Tokyo. Yatero forcefully tore off Dorotabo's necklace. Cabane punches Yatero, but when the kid looks back at Cabane, he sees a demon instead. Yatero runs scared, leaving the necklace and once the monster takes it back, he returns to Cabane. A bit later, Inugami finds Cabane in a corner curled up. He blames himself for being a monster and states he is the culprit. Inugami shows him that he has a tail and reveals that he's a shapeshifter. He explains that kimono exists, and usually they don't get involved with people. However, recently, there have been cases where some creatures have crossed the line and had children with humans. He tells Cabane that he is a hybrid between human and ghoul, that his necklace prevents his bloodthirst from manifesting, and that there is another culprit. This made it clear that Dorotabo couldn't have been the one killing the animals. But he gets worried about Yatero as he doesn't know about the incidents occurring during the new moon. While running, Yatero recalls how he accidentally killed Cabane when he was younger. Yet, instead of blood, something white came out instead. However, later that day, Cabane came back like nothing had happened. Yatero then gets attacked by two demonized and decomposed dogs, but Inugami shoots and decapitates one while Cabane breaks the neck of the other. Inugami was impressed by his quick and skillful actions. After noticing bite marks on the dogs, they turned around to discover the source, a deer ghoul with wide, sharp teeth. The deer leaped at them, but they managed to dodge it. Inugami shoots at its neck, almost decapitating her. Cabane then jumps in, putting his hand into the deer's mouth and then ripping its head from the body. 
While returning, Cabane comments he can't stay as Yatero knows what he is, and they will blame all on him. Inugami then points his gun at Cabane. Inugami reveals that Cabane's aunt had hired him to kill him as she also knew what he was as her older sister had told her when she left Cabane with her. She had kept this secret until recent events started to unfold. Even though the culprit is dead, she won't believe that it's not Cabane. Cabane understands this and nods, and Yugami asks him if he wishes to see his parents, but Cabane denies it and wants to be killed. With those final words, a bullet is fired into his forehead, and Yugami shows Cabane's body to his aunt and tells her he will dispose of the body. Later that night, Cabane woke up confused in the backseat of Inugami's car, because he should have been dead, but Inugami tells him that he is a ghoul and can't die. They arrive in Tokyo and Inugami takes Cabane to his counseling office and gives him some clothes. As he changes clothes, two kids come in and wonder who is Cabane. Inugami introduces the other two children who work at the office to Cabane who is Akira and Shiki. He then asks Cabane if he wants to work there and tells Cabane he doesn't need to answer right away. They were a detective agency that prevented kimonos from interfering with humans using any means necessary. They also provide a range of services from consulting to mortuary services. Akira then asks if Cabane is also a kimono since he smells a little unusual. And Yugami reveals that Cabane is an immortal demon and human hanyo which makes him similar to Shiki. Shiki then asks Cabane his age. Cabane reveals his age to be around 13 and Shiki says that he is 14, realizes he is one year older, and acts superior before going to the bathroom. He also tells Inugami that he will not share a room with him and let Cabane sleep on the sofa. Akira was the only one treating Cabane kindly, at least until he said she was a cute girl, making Akira run away in tears. It was then that Cabane discovered that Akira was a boy. In bed, Shiki is speaking with Akira and keeps repeating he hates Cabane. Akira started to guess why Cabane was there. They can only assume it was because Cabane had no home or because he was strong. Cabane goes to the bathroom, but he trips and sees a thread. This prompted Shiki to start asking about what had brought Cabane to their place. At first, Cabane replies that it was a car, but then explains that he couldn't stay at his own home. Shiki mocks him for being abandoned by his parents, but Cabane says now as he tries to get up. The web is holding him, and Shiki warns him to not try because he will cut himself, but Cabane forces it and frees himself. Shiki stops him and asks if it doesn't hurt. However, it quickly healed with a purple fire, leaving Shiki shocked. Cabane reassured Shiki that he had not been abandoned and then went to take a bath. The next day, the four go on a job. On the way, Inugami tells the three to get along in the work and a perfect way to show what they do. After arriving at the scene, the investigator tells them that there is a mother, a child and a rescuer inside. They see two siblings crying in a corner. They look through the door and see the room infected with bugs feeding on the people inside. Inugami describes that the bugs are harmless insects that just take a bit of your skin while sleeping. But they also have a favorite thing to eat and see anyone who tries to take their food as their enemy. The investigator then asks Inugami if there is anything they can do. Inugami responds that he can eliminate them. He considers transforming his body into steel to avoid getting bitten but that will take some time. The investigator explains a rescuer went inside but was eaten by the bucks. He thinks they should burn the house to keep the civilian population safe. But Inugami stops them because Shiki comes up with an idea to use his skills. Shiki shoots threads of silk in the room and creates a spider web. Shiki then uses it to make the bugs stick to it and move towards him. However, the bugs eat the web causing it to collapse. Inugami felt he had to go inside, but Cabane offered to go in instead because of his power. Inugami gives his permission and Cabane then goes inside. He's attacked by the bugs that injected a paralytic agent into the blood. But Cabane doesn't have blood because he is a ghoul. He also didn't feel pain because of the immense amount of trauma he had endured from his aunt. Cabane's task was to remove the item at the center of the swarm. Inugami then orders Cabane to lift it and successfully removes the bugs from the people. After the job, Akira says that those are strange bugs and what their favorite food is. Inugami replies that those bugs feed on the feeling of guilt and tells Cabane that the shoes are probably stolen. The boy from earlier came running to them and gave thanks to Cabane for saving his family. The boy asks the reason the bugs appeared in their house and Inugami advises him that it will be fine as long as they return the shoes. The young boy is shocked and tells them that their mother always put them above herself. But one day his younger brother stole some shoes for their mother because they didn't have money. 
He scolded his brother, but those harsh words made the bugs appear on his body. Kabane then wonders about what it means to have a family and asks Inugami if he works for him. Would he be able to meet his parents? Inugami then tells Kabane that he can live at the office. After arriving back at the office, Shiki felt guilty for being the only one who knew about Kabane's past. He decides to share that his mom is a spider kimono. Kabane asks if she is alive to which Shiki replies that he doesn't know, and they are probably not looking for him. Kabane says otherwise that maybe they are alive and looking for them. This annoyed Shiki who told him that if they got separated from their parents, then they would go look for them. But since they didn't, they were either dead or they abandoned them. Kabane still believed their parents hadn't abandoned them and that they were alive. But even if they were dead, they needed to find out who they were. Meanwhile, Inugami talks to someone over the phone and reports the finished job and about Kabane, who possessed a life stone. In the morning, Inugami orders Shiki to bring Kabane to Yoko, a kimono kitsune who held influence within the police. And since Kabane was a new member, he needed to pay his respects to her. Before they set out, Inugami handed Kabane a good luck charm. Shiki, Akira, and Kabane arrive at the police station. They ask to see Inari however is declined by the officer at the reception desk. A young girl appears to them whose name is Khan and asks who Kabane is. Khan then tells him that Inari is asking for him and orders Kabane to follow her. Before Shiki can follow along, Khan stops him saying that Inari only wants Kabane. Kabane proceeds to follow Khan and leaves. Being pushed inside by Khan, Kabane enters the room and sees Inari. Inari tells Kabane to show the life stone which Kabane, with no hesitation, hands it over. Inari asked Kabane if he knew the purpose of the life stone. She explained that the thirst kimono had was for different types of energy that humans produced, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. All of these were necessary for their survival. But now, with the life stone, they no longer needed to feed on humans. Suddenly, Kabane's head is decapitated by Khan. Inari orders the police who are under her spell to collect his head and place it in a briefcase to prevent him from regenerating. Khan offered to dispose of his body and deal with Kabane's friends. Meanwhile, Shiki grew increasingly annoyed by the 30-minute wait. But Kabane arrived carrying a briefcase. Akira asks him what's inside the case. Kabane responds that he needs to deliver it to Yoko's room later. Shiki starts mocking Inari and gives her a nickname, Kitsune Biddy. Suddenly, Kabane transforms himself which reveals to be Khan in disguise. Khan attacks the two using her flames, starting to set the entire police station on fire. Shiki scolded Khan for potentially harming innocent people, but she claimed that everyone there was under Inari's control, their minds so thoroughly manipulated that they couldn't even feel pain. Khan continued to hurl fireballs while repeating that she was a good girl. Shiki used his silk to steal the briefcase from Khan. Upon opening, they see Kabane's head still alive and surprisingly calm. Akira fainted from the sheer shock of it all. Afraid of the thought of not being a good girl to Inari, Khan enters a berserk state. She transforms completely into a furry form and creates even more chaos. Shiki carried Kabane's head and the unconscious Akira to safety. Suddenly, Kabane tells Shiki to throw him at Kun and he will take her down. Shiki questioned what a head could do, but he knew Kabane might just be capable because he was able to deal with the bugs. Shiki launched Kabane directly at her, and Kabane bit her shoulder which made her unconscious. This revealed that all the fire had been an illusion created by Khan. Kabane grows back his body, and they leave the station. They meet in Yugami who is waiting for them outside. Meanwhile, Yoko is seen riding a taxi and sees the life stone change its appearance into a tanuki doll. She then receives a call from Inugami. She says she must be getting old since she couldn't see through his shapeshifting. However, she promises that she will have to deal with Inugami personally. It turns out, Kabane is hiding the life stone inside his mouth. After Inugami and the others go to dinner and go back to the office, they see Khan at a distance which eventually collapses. She is given pizza and tells Inugami that she needs to retrieve Kabane's head. At that moment, a new human client arrives and sits at their bar. Kabane wondered why half of the office was essentially a bar. Shiki explained that before bringing them in, Inugami had a partner, and the bar had been their dream. However, since the partner was no longer around, Inugami decided to preserve it as a memory. The client then revealed that he was in love with a woman, but he didn't know anything about her. Akira then describes it as love. He reveals that he likes a good love story, as everyone there was born because their parents loved each other. Kabane becomes curious about the concept of love. He asks Inugami that if he follows the gentleman, he might learn and understand love, which will lead him to find out about his parents. Speechless by Kabane's thought, Inugami just gives his permission and orders Akira and Shiki to give him support. He also tells Khan to go after promising her to give Kabane's head. 
the man whose name is Yoruno gives them the details. Just then, he sees a rat under the table. He catches it with his mouth and apologizes because he couldn't resist. Everyone sees his cat face and he reveals a bag full of rats as a present to the woman. And Yugami deduced that Yoruno was affected by a kimono cat that could shapeshift to attract humans. The group met up at Shinjuku. Yoruno reveals a picture of her to them. They then wait for Mao to finish her work shift and see a cat go out from the establishment and enter an alley. Given that they were searching for a cat kimono, it seemed like the logical place to investigate. However, Mao explained that he didn't need detectives since he would soon join her, along with some strange cats with human faces who were former clients like him. However, she was surprised that for some reason, her seduction wasn't complete. Cabane intervened, stating that it wasn't seduction, it was love. Khan suddenly appeared out of nowhere and brought her over to Yoruno. Yoruno then poured out all his feelings and confessed that he had been a loner until Mao came into his life. She had brought light into his world, and he was willing to become a cat if it meant being with her. And for some reason, she accepts him because he can provide rats for her. After returning to the office, Khan demanded Cabane's head, and Yugami told her to close her eyes, picked up an orange, and transformed it into Cabane's head. Khan leaves and Inugami asks if Cabane learned anything about love. Cabane gives him some pocket tissues and explains that love is like light. He explains that Inugami showed him that life can have meaning and he considers it to be a light. He noticed that people give others something that will benefit them, and that's why he's giving him some tissue. He also mentioned that Shiki and Akira were like lights to him and will get something for them soon. The next day, they learned that Yoruno and Mao had gotten together and were now happily living as a couple. All of this made Akira ponder his usefulness, as Cabane had successfully solved many cases since his arrival. Therefore, he decides to become Cabane's apprentice, all because he saved Akira from a cockroach while he was taking a shower. Akira made it clear that Inugami could count on them. This case involved mysterious deaths where the victims had all been found as skeletonized remains in the Shibuya River. Cabane is then briefed about the Shibuya Rivers. Cabane arrives at the underground river and Akira arrives in protective gear. The two then ventured into the sewer when suddenly, a slug fell onto Akira. Cabane took the slug from Akira's shoulder and threw it into the river. Akira noticed that Cabane didn't harm the creatures and that they didn't harm him in return, reminding him of his twin brother. Akira then explains his past. He reveals that he and his twin were born in an ice kimono community that only has women. In fact, males are only born once every hundred years. And since they were two, they were marginalization and had decided to escape together. However, for some reason they got separated along the way, which was the reason Akira sought out in Yugami in the first place. Cabane asked if Akira could create or control ice. Akira confirmed that he could but it required concentration which he struggled with because he was usually nervous. Cabane expressed his curiosity about seeing Akira freeze the water's surface, but Akira hesitated, fearing that freezing it might harm the river animals. Their conversation was interrupted by a frog kimono that grabbed Akira from above. Cabane manages to free Akira, just as the frog-like species tries to attack again. A tanuki appears out of nowhere and bites the frog kimono. The tanuki then reveals a pouch, a letter, and blood in a container from a Yugami. According to the letter, the deaths were caused by the frog kimonos who had tasted human flesh, which had led them to abandon their intelligence and attack instinctively. The blood was meant to attract the kimonos so that they could defeat them. Cabane knew that Akira didn't have a liking for fighting, so he offered him the option to leave before things escalated. However, Akira recalls the reason he went to Tokyo and decided to fight. Akira pours the blood into the river to lure the frog kimonos. A bunch of frog kimonos appeared and began to attack them. Cabane and the Tanuki stood their ground against the approaching threat, but Akira froze, unable to fight back. Cabane tried to shield the frightened Akira, even though he got bitten in the process. Akira trembles and recalls what Yui said, that he is weak and he should not waste energy if the strong could defend him. Akira tells himself that he wants to be useful. Tired of being weak, Akira let out a desperate scream that triggered his abilities, turning everything into ice. Cabane congratulated him for taking out all the frogs in one powerful blow, and they took a photo to commemorate the victory. Meanwhile, the Tanuki walks away and meets an elderly frog kimono. The old frog thanks him for helping, explaining that the aggressive frogs were not only attacking humans but also their eggs. However, the Tanuki is revealed to be in Yugami, who promises to come back. With the situation under control, everyone took a moment to relax. Cabane is tasked to clean the office when he is dragged by someone into a room. 
Everyone ran to the room at the end of the hallway which Cabain was cleaning and saw Cabane following the orders of Mihai, a vampire who had a penchant for exploiting Cabane's abilities, allowing him to slack off while Cabain did all the work. Mihai then introduces himself and declares Cabane as his low-key slave. Cabain then obliges to it without any hesitation. Then Yugami tells the group about Mihai, describing him as someone with superhuman strength, abilities, and intelligence. Mihai didn't age either, making him an advanced race even among the kimono. Only after he had accumulated knowledge and experiences to the fullest did he humbly accept Inugami's invitation to live with him and provide support for his business. That's when he became a devoted gamer. He says that as long as everyone kept their distance from Mihai, things should be fine. The next day, Shiki and Akira again see Kabane in Mihai's room being ordered around. Shiki tells Mihai to not treat Kabane as a slave. Mihai proposes a deal that if they beat him in arm wrestling, he will set Kabane free. However, Shiki loses. Suddenly, Kabane offers to arm wrestle Mihai. However, Kabane is also defeated just like Shiki. Inugami tells Akira and Shiki that Mihai is toying with them and has brute strength because he is a vampire. This defeat left Kabane deep in thought. While shopping, Kabane pondered the necessity of training to protect the people he cared about because being immortal wasn't enough. He then encounters Khan and tries to hide his head. She reveals that she doesn't need Kabane's head anymore because Inari discarded and got another Kitsune to serve her. Kabane thinks this is his chance to test his strength and asks if Khan wants to fight. Khan gets the upper hand by pinning Kabane to the ground and delivering several punches. However, he manages to restrain her and headbutts her to win the fight. Khan starts crying over her loss and being weak. Kabane holds her hand to comfort her and she falls asleep. Meanwhile, back at the office, Inugami is shocked to see Mihai leave his room. Mihai reveals that his arm was broken by Kabane. Therefore, he can't play games and decides to help Inugami in his work. Mihai accepts a job with no permission from Inugami. Back at the park, Khan sleeps until nighttime and Khan wakes her up. Kabane then offers Khan to stay at their place. Khan refuses saying she can't live with a tanuki. She proposes to live with Kabane at the park. Kabane refuses saying that he has a chore and will be back soon. After returning to the office, Mihai tells the three about the new case. Shiki is excited about this mission because he can test his new insect camouflage skill. Their task is to investigate a company that had a case three years ago where several employees decided to become meat pancakes at the same time. However, the next year, the company had zero cases. Shiki uses his camouflage to infiltrate while Mihai leads and instructs the operation remotely, using an electric toy car to scout and record. While surveying the place, Shiki stumbles upon a room full of workers. Suddenly, a worker goes out of the room, crying out of desperation. While trying to leave, the worker is stopped by the manager, who takes the worker to an empty room. Upon turning the lights on, the worker's brains were sucked by a mosquito kenomo. After that, the worker calms down and returns to work. Mihai approaches Inugami and asks about the mosquito-like kimonos. Kabane says that they should attack them considering that there are also kimonos. But Shiki wants a more rational approach, like formulating a plan with Inugami. Mihai gets annoyed because Shiki is too rational and cautious and decides to have fun. He uses his toy car to make noise. One of the kimonos sees the car and they decide to split up to check the building for any intruders. However, Shiki's camouflage is seen by one of them. He's about to be attacked, but she gets electrocuted by the car. Shiki starts to tremble, making Mihai more interested in playing with him. Shiki starts having panic attacks when confronted by the mosquito girl. He's unable to contain his fear and starts begging for someone to help him. Just then, Cabane calls out to him through the transmitter and tells him they are on their way to him. The mosquito girl is unable to locate him because of the camouflage and begins to attack each corner. Shiki is smart and uses his silk to restrain her, followed by a dropkick. Just then, Cabane and Akira arrive at his location, dragging another mosquito girl. Both of the girls are restrained, and they decide what to do next. Just then, the last mosquito girl arrives and apologizes for her sister's actions. She would allow them to leave if they kept the entire incident a secret. However, Cabane refuses, saying he needs to stop them. Just then, the mosquito girl begins to suck the brains of her sisters and transforms into her mosquito form. Cabane tries to attack her but she restrains his arm and lifts him. He kicks her to get free but she restrains his other arm and stabs him. Shiki and Akira try to help Cabane but both are thrown away. Cabane put all his strength into resisting and refusing to give up for the sake of his friends. However, he couldn't break free, even after breaking his arms. Cabane starts remembering when he thought of becoming stronger for the sake of his friends. Just then, Mihai tells him that Cabane is focusing on the wrong thing, 
and if he continues he will destroy his body. Nehai reveals the only reason why Cabane cannot beat him or the mosquito is because he's using his human strength instead of the kimono one. Nehai tells him to forget about being human and advises him to follow his instincts to defeat the mosquito and protect his friends. Suddenly, Cabane's hair turns red as he unleashes his kimono power. He manages to regenerate his arms and uses his strength to rip the mosquito's arms away. He then realized that, unlike last time, he was able to control his power thanks to the life stone. His body returns to normal and a kimono named Nabamaru arrives, introducing himself as someone working for Inari. Nabamaru burns all the mosquitoes to destroy all evidence. Before leaving, Nabamaru tells him a secret that Inari still hasn't given up on stealing his life stone. Kabane asks the reason he is revealing it to him to which Nabamaru tells him that he hates Inari. Back at the office, the members talk about the finished mission. The next day, news about the company's situation is reported. Over 700 employees were being exploited by the Mosquito Sisters. Suddenly, Cabane remembers his promise to Khan and rushes over to her. He then reveals that he went on a mission and forgot about her. Khan sulks hearing this since she even caught fish for both of them to eat, but they have gone rotten. Meanwhile, Nabamaru is seen spying on both of them. Back at the office, Shiki who always refused to learn about his parents, asks Inugami to tell him everything. Inugami decided to take everyone on a road trip to the place where Shiki was born and lived with his mother. Their mission was to find Shiki's uncle, hoping to find out what happened to his parents. Upon arriving, Inugami took care of checking them into an inn while the rest of the group decided to explore a souvenir shop. Shiki notices a young girl staring at him, but she leaves without saying anything. And Yugami arrives with Akio, Shiki's uncle who had agreed to help them. They go into the forest, but Shiki begins hearing an unusual voice calling out his name. His uncle explains that he is Shiki's father's younger brother and someone who knows a lot about kimono. He reveals that they met Shiki's mother while exploring the forest. The two fell in love and made Shiki. However, Shiki's father passed away while his mother was still pregnant. But when Shiki was five, his mother got sick and passed away. Akio thinks the reason why Shiki has so much trauma is because he saw his mother's corpse up close. Since Akio seemed to be about to cry, everyone decided to leave him and explore the area. The kids meet Nabamaru who ends up joining them. But while wandering, Shiki hears the voice calling him again. He follows it and finds a tree. He suddenly remembers he used this tree as a landmark. He suddenly runs to the right and follows a hidden path he used to when he was still a kid. He finds a cabin and remembers this is where his mother used to work alongside his uncle. His mother always told him to not get inside, but he was a curious kid. One day, he opened the door to peek inside, just to find his mother chained with an ugly kimono on top. Nabamaru finds an artificial insemination catheter inside the cabin, followed by blood and scratch marks. Nabamaru then suddenly remembers a certain kimono incident. A few years ago, a certain item called Healing Silk appeared in the human market. This item could replace cells and tissue within organs. Inari knew this item was a result of a human experimenting with a kimono. So, she decided to remove that item from the market because it could expose the kimono to humanity. She also blacklisted the human who tried to sell the item. That person is Shiki's uncle. Nabamaru guesses this is the place where Akio used to create the healing silk. Suddenly, Shiki starts recalling that his uncle knocked him down when he peeked inside the cabin. He woke up later, but his uncle told him that she was sick and she needed to recover. Every time Shiki inquired about his mother, his uncle would postpone the explanation. Eventually, Shiki stopped asking because he was afraid of confronting the worst. Upon hearing Nabamaru's words, Shiki decides that if that's the truth, he will kill his uncle. Meanwhile, Inugami goes to Akio's room and tells him he wants to talk. Shiki asks Kabane if he is going to stop him from killing Akio, but Kabane couldn't care less and wants to help. Meanwhile, in the forest, Inugami asks about the golden spider webbing. Akio becomes frozen and tells Inugami that he keeps getting in his way. He reveals there is a local legend about a spider creating threads made of gold. So, he assumed he could use Shiki's mother to get rich. Shiki's father didn't want it, so Akio pushed him off a cliff. However, Shiki fell seriously ill after he was born. The treatment was very expensive, so Akio suggested to Shiki's mother to use her powers so they could afford it. Akio believed the spider in the legend was a mutant spider kimono. So, he tried to use the forest kimonos to mate with Shiki's mother. They failed many times, but when they managed to succeed, Shiki found them. Akio took advantage of Shiki's memory loss from the hit to separate him from his mother. Akio then reveals this silk will make him famous and rich. Inugami then raises his phone, 
revealing that he was on a call with Shiki and asks him what he wants to do. Shiki suddenly appears from the trees and captures Akio using his threats. Akio tells Shiki that he did everything within his power to support him and his mother, but this only makes Shiki angrier who promises to give him a painful death. Suddenly, Akira arrives, crying and covered in dirt. A kimono appears behind Akira and tries to attack him. Inugami manages to protect Akira but is poisoned by the kimono. They are both dragged by the kimono, leaving the rest to deal with Akio. A group of kimono appear to help Akio. He reveals they're all Shiki's siblings, all the result of Akio's experiments. Shiki suddenly hears his mother's words through his siblings which makes him break down in tears. Kabane suddenly transforms and approaches Shiki. Shiki cries and begs for Kabane's help. Akio orders one of the kimono to attack them, but Kabane destroys it by punching it Agis into tree. Meanwhile, Inugami and Akira are surrounded by kimono. Inugami is unable to use his power because of the poison inside his body and asks Akira to freeze his arm. Just as the kimonos are about to attack them, the young girl appears and orders the kimonos to stop. She tells Inugami to come with her to heal his arm. Meanwhile, Kabane continues to deal with the kimonos, with only one goal in mind, to kill Akio. A giant kimono tries to fight Kabane, but he climbs its arm and defeats it with a huge punch in the eye. On the other hand, the young girl leads Inugami and Akira into a spring, which eventually heals Inugami's arm. She begs for them not to kill Akio since there is still something she needs to ask him. Meanwhile, Kabane managed to defeat all of the Kanomos despite losing his arms. He approaches Akio while regenerating his body and throws him near Shiki, saying that he can do whatever he wants to him. Shiki thanked Kabane, but he realized that killing his uncle wouldn't bring his mother back. Just then, Inugami and Akira arrive together with the young girl whose name is Aya. Akio is shocked to see Aya. She asks Akio where he hid the cocoon she made. Akio refuses to reveal the information. Everyone starts to wonder who she is and why she's stopping them. Aya tells Shiki she can't reveal who she is or otherwise, she will be hated by him. Inugami offers to track down the cocoon and contacts Mihai to get information about Akio. Mihai reveals that Akio checks the springs every day. Upon hearing it, Aya rushes to it, being followed by Shiki. Aya realizes the reason the spring has detoxifying effects is because the cocoon was there. Aya tries to dive into the spring, but Shiki offers to do it instead. After some time underneath, he finds his mother wrapped in a cocoon. Shiki resurfaces and asks if his mother is still alive. Aya reveals her full name and her true identity as the Golden Webbing. Everyone arrives at the area and is shocked to see Shiki's mother still alive. Akio reveals that he needs to keep Shiki's mother alive because he wants to mass-produce kimonos like Aya. Shiki gets angry and smacks Akio's face, telling him to stop treating his family like things. He then asks Inugami to move his mother to a safe place and decides not to kill Akio. He also decides to take his sister Aya with them. The group leaves and goes back to Tokyo. Meanwhile, Akio tries to run away and starts to plan which kimono he will experiment with. However, Nabamaru appears, revealing that he just tagged along because he was tasked to kill him. Later, the group arrives at a clinic run by Inugami's friend, Granny Ohana. She checks Shiki's mother's state and thinks that her condition might be something psychological. She reassures that she will wake up soon and the group leaves the room. Later, everyone is asleep while Shiki is still at his mother's side. Aya is about to knock on the door, but she gives up the idea because she feels like she doesn't deserve it. She explains that her first job was to use her healing silk to heal her mother. Since then, Akio treated her like an object and mistreated her. She lived in the basement with her unconscious mother, until one day, she heard Akio talking on the phone with Shiki. That's how she found out that she had an older brother. She dreamed that Shiki would come to save them once their mother recovered. But deep down, she felt like Shiki would never accept her because her power was the reason their lives got ruined. Shiki notices that Aya is at the door and tells her to come see their mother. Aya asks Shiki if he doesn't hate her and why won't he kill her like the other kimonos. Shiki replies that she's the reason why their mother is alive. He explains that she did a lot for their mother while he was living a comfortable life without worrying. She asks if he minds if she keeps calling Kumi his mother, but he doesn't. She then asks if she can call him Big Brother. Shiki gets shy and lets out a shout, which wakes up their mother. She calls their names and hugs them. After that night, Shiki decided to stay at the hospital for a while to take care of his mother. However, it's already been a week and Shiki never came back to the agency. They think he quit the job, but Shiki then arrives, mentioning he has no plans on quitting. He thanks Kabane for helping him find his mother and promises to help him find his. Aya also arrives at the agency with a completely different attire and personality. 
She reports to Inugami that she decided to also join the agency. Inugami quickly gives her a contract to sign, but Shiki tries to reason with her. Aya explains she wouldn't need to work if Shiki wasn't a broke loser. Shiki asks Kabain to help him to convince her, but Kabain pulls a non-ten-top betrayal, mentioning that if she has power, she should use it. Aya turns to him, mentioning that she fell in love with Kabane after watching him fight against the kimonos for Shiki. She asks him to be her boyfriend and he accepts, thinking it simply means doing stuff together as teammates. Shiki faints while Akira tries to explain, but Khan suddenly arrives and challenges Kabane to a fight. Inugami interrupted and talked about a new job about incidents where women's faces are being ripped. Kabane, Aya, and Khan take on the job and arrive where the incidents happen. While doing the job, Khan starts to get jealous of Kabane and Aya. She is then distracted by a voice saying it will help her. Suddenly, Aya's hair was grabbed, and she was pulled into the air by something invisible. Kabane doesn't see anything, but he decides to punch it anyway. Aya is suddenly released, and he catches her. The responsible was Kimono, who is revealed to be formless and shows herself. She explains that she loves a guy who's popular with girls. So, she steals women's faces by ripping them to make sure she doesn't become his side chick. She then points out Khan being in pain. While being questioned by Aya about what is wrong with her, Khan gets angry and transforms into her Kitsune form. She tries to attack Aya, but Kabane manages to protect her. This makes Khan cry and run away. Later, they return to the agency and reveal that Aya solved the case. Shiki is confused, but she explains that she used her silk to create a fake body for the kimono. Akira and Shiki are shocked because Aya is proving to be way more useful on the first day when compared to them during their whole lives. Aya then leaves and gives Kabane a goodbye kiss. Later that night, Kabane goes to the park and asks what's wrong with Khan. Kabane sees Khan crying and questions her. Kabane comforts Khan which makes her feel better. Khan reveals that she wants to be the most important person to Kabane and asks him what she should do to do that. But Kabane doesn't know. The next day, Aya and Khan bicker with each other at the agency. Akira then decides to help and asks Kabane to choose his lover. Everyone anticipates his answer and Kabane says it's Inugami. Aya and Khan are shocked and interrogate Inugami, while Akira realizes that Kabane still doesn't understand the concept of love. Later, Akira sees his stuffed toy, which he named after his brother, ripped open for no reason. Inugami tells Akira to ask Mihai to fix it. Upon receiving the mended stuffed toy, Akira hears a voice and Mihai reveals that he installed some artificial intelligence in it. Inagami then came with some strange bags for a strange mission. Turns out, a sand kimono passed away on the beach and its significant other wants to separate him from the sand. In short, they'll be separating sand from sand. However, Akira trips on it and spills all its contents. During the next few days, Akira causes problems all over the place. He doesn't plug the kettle while making instant noodles, breaks a vase, accidentally lets out the cats, and spills food. But his breaking point came when Kabane roasted him like a savage. Kabane tells him that he doesn't mind Akira being a useless waste of breathing air, as he's already used to fixing everything he ruins. Due to this, Akira decides to leave the agency. While roaming the streets, he encounters Yui, his lost brother. Akira mentions this must be luck because he ran away from Inugami's office and doesn't have a place to stay. He then asks Yui what he has been doing all this time and buys him a crate. However, Yui refuses and instead gives it back to him. Yui takes Akira to a park and asks what kind of house he wants. Akira replies he wants to have something like an ice castle. After hearing this, Yui uses his power to build an ice castle. Upon getting inside, Akira requests more ice creations from Yui. He tries to take pictures of the place to post on social media. But Yui grabs his phone, freezes, and breaks it because Akira won't need it. Yui leaves, telling Akira not to leave the place while he finds food outside. Yui also creates an ice door to lock Akira inside the castle. Back at the agency, Shiki fails to make dinner. Kabane gives his opinion about the food which makes Shiki angry. He tells Kabane to go buy some dinner. Shiki washes the plates, but he keeps breaking them. After arriving back, Kabane tells Shiki that he realizes that Akira is good at something very important. After all, Akira was the bridge that helped them understand each other. Kabane then tells Shiki for them to find Akira to which Shiki agrees. However, they cannot contact him because Akira's phone is dead. While browsing the news, Inugami sees a post about an ice castle. They decide to check the location full of reporters and see Yui coming out from the castle. A reporter asks if he is the castle owner, but Yui tries to attack him. Inugami shoots his hand to stop him, making everyone run in panic. Yui freezes the wound and Kanabe notices something similar to his life stone attached to Yui's chest. Inugami says that's a null stone. 
He quickly explains that several types of stones have kimono powers. Kabane's life stone helps him control his thirst, but Yui's stone brings death, and Yugami knows it's forbidden to take the Null Stone out of the Snow Village. He asks what happened to the village, but Yui ignores the question. Instead, he thanks Inugami for taking care of Akira. Yui asks Shiki and Kabane what are their relationship with Akira. Kabane responds they are friends and asks if Akira is inside the castle. Meanwhile inside the castle, Akira is looking at social media by using his stuffed toy. He begins to worry about his brother and the artificial intelligence gives a report. It reveals that Yui's temperature around his heart is extremely low, which may affect him physically and mentally. Yui then comes inside and tells Akira to come down, but when he does, he sees his friends frozen. Akira gets on his knees, shocked to see everyone in this state. Yui thinks he's feeling sick and leaves the ice castle to find medicine. Akira cries while claiming that all his friends have died. However, the stuffed toy tells him they are still alive. Akira becomes happy and wonders if there is any way to melt the ice. After a while, Yui returns to the ice castle with some herbs. Akira tries to use this as an opportunity and requests salt and water, mentioning he wants to take a bath. But he wants to use it to melt the ice. While waiting for the requested salt and water, Kabane manages to break from the ice. Kabane tells Akira about the Null Stone and asks him about it. Akira remembers they used it to create a barrier to protect the snow village against snowstorms. Kabane needs to persuade his brother even if it means fighting him. Kabane then tells Akira to come back to the agency and apologizes for what he said to him that morning. Akira is worried that Yui might freeze them again and kill them. So, he tells Kabane that he is the one who told his brother to deal with them. Kabane then asks why Akira is lying. However, Akira lies again and says that he always felt that way and hates them. Yui arrives and tries to freeze Kabane again. Akira stops him saying that he doesn't care about them and wants to leave the place. Before leaving, Akira sheds a tear and says goodbye to Kabane. Yui and Akira then both leave the place. The stuffed toy then asks for Kabane's help to finish Akira's tasks. Kabane follows the toy's instructions to melt the ice when suddenly, Inari appears by his side. Kabane steps back however Inari reveals that she wants the Null Stone. She asks for Kabane's help, revealing that it is connected to his parents. Meanwhile, Akira tells his brother they haven't taken a stroll together for years. Yui confirms and remembers the last time they did. During that time, Akira asked Yui if the chief's duties were hard and asked if he could help him. Yui simply replied he was strong while Akira was weak. Yui promises to protect Akira's pure smile. However, Akira reveals that he's not that pure because he peed on his bed last night. Yui initially brushes it off, until he remembers that Akira is 14 and never peed on bed. He realizes it's something else. He thinks that he needs to make sure that every woman in the village doesn't find out. Because turns out, that the chief's job is to fulfill 200 women's needs. The next day, Yui ordered to assemble all the women of the village to make a deal. He promises to make every woman fulfilled in exchange for letting Akira leave the village. Otherwise, he's going to turn himself into a meat pancake. The women of the village agree to the condition. That's when Yui ordered Akira to leave and told him they'd meet in Tokyo. However, days later Yui finds out the women betrayed him and went after Akira. They tried to capture Yui but he managed to escape the village. He ran to the mountain where the Null Stone was and combined himself with its power. He used it to destroy the whole village and everyone there. Suddenly, Yui hears something coming and locks up Akira in a cage. Nabamaru appears and Yui asks if he's Akira's friend. Nabamaru replies he's just a stranger and Yui tries to attack him. Nabamaru manages to escape with his right foot frozen but melts it using his flames. Nabamari transforms into his Kitsune appearance. Meanwhile, Inari tries to convince Kabane to help her, mentioning the Life Stone and the Null Stones are some sort of siblings. If they manage to get it, he might find out something about his parents. Kabane wants to know more, but he doesn't want to leave Inugami and Shiki behind. However, Inugami manages to talk and tells Kabane to join Inari and save Akira. Kabane leaves and runs through the forest to find them. Meanwhile, Nabamaru replicates multiple of himself. However, Yui summons large ice picks and attacks Nabamaru. Akira calls out to Yui which makes Yui distracted. Nabamaru uses this chance to steal the Null Stone. However, Nabamaru wasn't able to stand the stone's power resulting in it injuring his hands. He tries to think about how to retrieve the stone, but Yui attacks him. Suddenly, Kabane shows up and saves Nabamaru by kicking him away. Together with Nabamaru, Kabane devises a plan to take down Yui. Kabane sets his immortal body on fire and attacks Yui, which melts Yui's ice. Yui covers his body with ice armor and promises to protect Akira. 
Akira still tries to get out of the ice cage when he suddenly realizes the fog created by the fight. Since it's made of water, he tries to use his power to create a large ice to break the cage. While in battle, Nabumaru reminds Kabein that his body will fall apart if the flames overpower his regeneration skill. However, Kabein insists that Nabumaru increase the power of his flames. He uses his full flame power, allowing Kabein to run forward and melt Yui's armor with several punches. Just as Kabein is about to land the final blow, Akira steps in and stops him. As a result, Kabein's body is unable to regenerate, and he turns into bones. Suddenly, Yui's body starts to break. Akira gets worried and Nabumaru explains this was part of his plan. He reveals that Yui has run out of energy because he's been giving his life to the Null Stone. He also explains that Yui will disintegrate if he keeps the stone on his chest. Nabumaru tells Akira to not worry about it because Yui used the power for his reasons. And in the end, that power brought his death. Kabane suddenly starts speaking, refusing to let Yui die. He wants to know more about the stone, but he also knows that Yui is Akira's light. Those words motivate Akira to try to take the stone from his brother's chest. While doing it, Akira can see Yui's memories from the moment they went their separate ways. He realizes that Yui sacrificed himself for him to protect him. Learning what his brother went through, Akira cries and tells his brother they will share happiness and fun from now on. Kabane rushes to Akira's side and tries to help Akira. He spits out his life stone which combines into one with the null stone. Suddenly, Inari appears and grabs the new combined stone. She inspects it and Nabumaru asks if she knows they would combine. Suddenly, Inugami arrives and tells Inari to give the stone back since it belongs to Kabe. She tries to dismiss it, stating that it could be the Null Stone, instead of Kabe's Life Stone. However, Inugami replies that it belongs to Akari and his brother. Inari gives up and tosses back the new stone. The group returns to Granny Ohana's hospital, where Kabe asks Yui for more information about the Null Stone. Yui explains the stones were created to prevent a war against humans as it happened 1000 years ago. Kabane finds out there are several other stones, and they all have something in common. They were all created by powerful kinds of kimonos. This means that since Kabane's parents gave him the life stone, he must be the new king of his kimono kind. But the only way for Kabane to find out about his parents is to get his hands on different stones. And Yugami then reveals there are more stones in different regions and reveals they need to find them. He tells Kabane it's time to fulfill his wish to find his parents. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.